So it looks like we finally have some more zombie news with the latest blog post that Treyarch has finally put out. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, this is a really, really good one. But without further ado, let's actually just get into this straight up and let's go over like the big main points that everyone is talking about. Number one, we're gonna be talking about the updates to Liberty Falls. Now, obviously these are just screenshots and they're not actual in-game footage. So it's gonna be a bit difficult to tell. Like we couldn't tell how bad Liberty Falls looked in the actual trailers until we saw gameplay. So so we're going to have to wait and see how this looks in game before we fully come to our final decision. But I mean, just looking at this very first screenshot, you see how everything kind of is like overcast and lighting actually looks like it's like it stands out now. Shadows are deeper and lights now look like they're much brighter than they were before. Like, bro, look at this. Look at this dude. Look at this dude up here. Look at this guy. And if we continue down further, we actually see this one right here with the church. This is what I wanted. I wanted more like environmental story telling and this actually makes sense that these rifts are opened up near the church because this is where the uh, portal to the dark ether and pack a bunch are and they also tease down here that there of course might be a brand new easter egg song by kevin sherwood who if you guys don't know is actually back directing some of the music in call of duty zombies for easter eggs which is fantastic there's two confirmed that we know of and maybe more in the future but we don't know also get some more images of what liberty falls looks like post uh look so it looks like it's more of an old overcast not a massive change but the lighting looks so so much better look at that there's more blood any i don't remember there actually being any blood up here it looks a lot more chaotic like there's burn marks everywhere it looks like there's more fire maybe going on as well here we go with the motel there's more like uh burnt bodies and uh like dead people kind of everywhere and here we go with like more rifts being opened and stuff much much better i know to some people kind of looking at these images going through them. It's like, ah, uh, that's not that big of a change. But keep in mind, were you guys honestly expecting them to change like anything about the map at all? Because I actually, I genuinely wasn't expecting anything. I thought they were going to stand their ground and say, eh, whatever, you know, you guys can just deal with it. But seriously, man, the lighting looks so, so much better. Maybe I'm being too forgiving here, especially after, you know, I, I like set my expectations so low when I first saw Liberty Falls. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Second, let's go over the next big point, which is the HUD touch-ups. So we're going to read this kind of verbatim here. The UI team has continued to update the game's modular HUD, touching up some of the zombie-specific elements that can appear across most HUD preset options and adding new settings. These updates include character portraits added into the bottom left corner by default, general alignment and color adjustments made across the entire HUD, perk icons now positioned closer together. Perfect. We needed that as well. It was just way too spaced out. It looks stupid in my opinion. In-game gobblegum reward animation added. And this is the big one, guys. Visibility sliders added to allow players to fine tune or completely disable additional HUD elements, including score feed, medals, and notifications, mini map opacity, weapon and equipment information, and more. Hold on, hold on. Before I show you guys, this was an excellent um, Reddit thread here from uh, Rutu uh, Rutu uh, 124. So this was the HUD beforehand, okay? Uh, pardon the really terrible quality, but that's just how it is. And anyway, here's the new HUD. Three, two, one, boom. Look at how much better that is. This is with the minimap turned off. This is with the HUD turned off. The points in salvage look like they're bigger and they take up more space. The portrait on the bottom left looks awesome. The perks are no longer taking up like the entire bottom of the screen. The fact I can turn off some of that equipment HUD stuff in the bottom right as well. This is how I will be playing the game. Look at how much cleaner. Now, do I wish that maybe it was like had a bit more personality, like maybe some blood splattered on the weapon icon or whatever. Maybe it would change colors depending on what the rarity of your weapon is. Sure. But like, come on. The fact they even listened at all is insane to me. And here we go with the next part of the uh, section. Look at this. We have an augment overview so here we have the actual perk and then here we have like the research 
augments. This is very cool. Equip augments to your Perca Cola's ammo mods and field upgrades to modify their performance, which they have a recap to it, but we're going to go over like the juicy big details. There are 108 augments available. There are 108 augments available to unlock and equip at the game's launch, divided as follows. So here we go. Perca Cola's, they have eight. We have so Perca Cola's, we have eight of them, and each has six augments. So that's 84 augments. Ammo mods, there's five of them. Each have six. So that's 30. Field upgrades, there's five of them, and they have six each. 30. Good spread. That will probably last us a very long time, and I feel like people can easily mix and match them. And here we go with, look at this menu, by the way. I remember a lot of people saying like, oh, the menu doesn't look terrible. It, it was obviously unfinished, and this is very, very cool. I actually like this. So here we go. Uh, augment, so here we go. Augment research. The key to unlocking the full potential of your loadouts is augment research. This unlocks at the player. This unlocks at player level 11. Interesting. Once you research and unlock individual augments, they can be chosen before the start of a match for each individual perk, ammo mod, or field upgrade. To start researching an augment, simply select which item you would like to research in the menu and then start earning XP in-game to make progress towards those augments. So it seems like to me you can only do one at a time, which I think is great. That means there's going to be something to long-term, like upgrade-wise, you know, be grinding for instead of just your camos. So if you don't care about camos at all, this will definitely hold you over and be something to go for, especially as you're prestiging. Oh, wait, are we just going to see all of them? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So in-depth augment custom is, I think we're actually going to see all 48 augments for the Perca Cola. That's insane. What? So I get, yeah, so we're just going to go over every single one and we're going to see what surprises we have. So major augments for Juggernaug. Probiotics slightly increase maximum health with Juggernaug. So I assume that maybe without armor, you would become a five shot, which is pretty interesting. Uh, Turtle Shield. Armor acts like a shield on your back, completely absorbing damage to your back. No damage mitigation when hit from the front. I want to be, I, I, I want to be so excited for that. I want to be like, yes, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I want. But I'm going to be honest, I don't think anyone's going to use this at all. At least in the meta, I don't think it makes any sense to actually use the turtle shield because super sprinters exist along with the assortment of a bunch of different mini boss type enemies. So I really don't see a lot of people using this in my opinion, but I mean, I guess it could be interesting for challenge runs. And if you're an OOG player, then hey, guess what? You now have a way to play with a shield, even though it technically doesn't act like it. But hey, I think that's a very, a very good kind of middle ground if they want to stick with armor plates as they are right now. Reactive armor when in armor plate breaks nearby normal enemies are stunned for a short time interesting so like i this could be in the way of like like a flashbang or a stun grenade like how that works as an equipment that might be interesting i could definitely see some use out of that if you're doing like specifically a training strat that'd be kind of interesting uh minor augments retaliation deals bonus damage when health is low mm, i uh, maybe i can maybe see that being used all right let's see this uh next up hardened plates armor plates have more damage mitigation okay Okay, that, okay, that's going to be used a lot. Durability plates, slightly increased armor durability. Okay, so retaliation is never being used. I don't see a single reason you would ever use that ever. But hardened plates and durability, that's going to be really interesting to see which one comes up on top. I like this so far. There's one kind of like maybe for play style purposes, and then the other two are like genuinely interesting options that maybe you could see which one you like more than the other. Good, good, good. Uh, next up, we have stamina up, increases movement speed. That's the base thing. Major augment, free faller, become immune to fall damage. So does PhD not give you immunity to fall damage then? It's just like explosive damage. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, dasher, increase tag Tactical sprint duration. Ugh, why? Okay, listen, that's good, but I just, I don't like, does anyone else hate tactical sprint in zombies? I think it's, I think it's terrible and just looks awful in my opinion. And lastly, we have stalker. Walk faster while aiming down sights. I see no one using that and I have no idea why you would use that. Even for a camping strategy, that doesn't sound that good in my opinion, but whatever. Minor augments. First up, we have hard to target while tactical sprinting projectile damage is reduced. So that's like a direct counter to mangler zombies, parasites, and then I guess the ranged attack of the abomination and it kind of future proofs the perk. That's a very interesting uh, augment. 
which actually would go very well with Dasher. So if you're a trainer or you prefer training always, I would say hard target and Dasher might be a must use. Uh, next up, quarterback, use equipment while sprinting. Eh, I guess that could be good, but personally, I've never really seen a problem in like just doing that slight pause and then, you know, using your equipment. Still cool. That's interesting. And lastly, we have hot foot in a speed boost after your equipment kills an enemy. Hmm, that that's going to be really interesting for getting out of corners in your equipment. I think that means lethal tactical and your uh your your field upgrade if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. That could be really good. We got some really interesting minor augments here. I actually feel like that should be a major one. That sounds really good, honestly. <laughs> Next up, Speed Cola. For those of you who don't know, it also uh, replates armor faster, so that's a great little feature. Uh, first major augment, Supercharge. Field upgrades recharge a bit faster. What does it mean by a bit? Is it like half an arsenal accelerator, a quarter, a third? It, it, depending on how fast this is, this could be meta right off the bat, potentially. Uh, classic formula, reload speed is even faster. Okay, okay, okay. So from what classic formula means in my head, that means 50% reload speed. Amazing, amazing, great. Right off the bat, that's awesome. Lastly, phantom reload. Weapon magazines are slowly refilled over time. Okay, I take back what I said. Phantom reload could be insane. Now it depends. Does it work with stowed weapons? And does it work when you're actively firing the weapon? Like, could you imagine on the jet gun while you're firing it, you're slowly gaining back ammo. So instead of like, so instead of having like maybe a hundred ammo in the jet gun while shooting, like over time, it slowly refills. So you get like 110 or 115 in the magazine or in the, in the energy core, whatever the hell you call it. That's interesting. Uh, first minor augments. Speedy, first minor augment, speedy roulette. Oh, uh, the mystery box settles much faster. That's uh, just, uh, 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 whatever, whatever, I guess. Quick swap, swap weapons much faster. That is very good. And I very much do appreciate that. Uh, fast pitcher, deploy equipment faster. Honestly, uh, unless they're nerfed for some reason, I don't really see that being used all that much. I think quick swap is just going to be uh, permanently on for me. Uh, Deadshot Daiquiri is next. The first major augment, deadhead, further increase critical damage. Nice, just a flat damage increase. Okay, dead first deals double critical damage if an enemy is at full health. Tell me why that wouldn't be meta always, especially if there's a wonder weapon that deals headshot damage. I can't see that ever not being used, but whatever. Dead again, critical hits have a chance of adding a bullet to your magazine. That would be really, really good for camping strategies, actually. Okay, so Deadshot has a really good assortment of major augments that I maybe will be switching out, like depending on the map or depending on what I'm doing. Very, very, I like seeing this. I want to see more of this, especially in like future perks or whatever. Uh, minor augments, dead break, increase damage to armor pieces. Very good. Armored zombies are the bane of my existence in Cold War, so I think I'm going to have this on permanently. <laughs> uh, next up dead draw reduce hip fire spread so kind of like something you get from uh, don't you, wait doesn't that actually no it doesn't oh okay i thought regular dead shot did that in cold war but maybe i'm maybe i'm tripping uh dead set reduce gun movement while performing advanced movements i don't really see that being a problem for anyone other than like brand new players i i guess i can't really see that being used that much but dead break is i feel like a must use just based off what i'm seeing uh next up quick revive emt reviving an ally allows them to keep all perks on their bleed out bar that is very good uh, especially if you're a medic or like you're the better player in the fight, like you're the better player in your uh, team and you're playing with friends that maybe aren't as good as you. That's going to be great, especially in Easter eggs. Oh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Equivalent exchange. Killing an enemy while down will revive you and remove quick revive. This can be done up to three times. OK, listen, so they said only three self revives from the salvage menu. Does this mean if you run this in solo, you can have six downs? Because if that's the case, so Solo players, I think that might be a must use unless uh, unless the next one is better, which I, I mean, that's a pretty good contender. I'm not going to lie. Uh, dying wish on lethal damage, become immune to all damage for two seconds and keep one health. Quick revive is removed. Hmm, that's interesting. It's going to depend on how good the ray gun is here or like whatever your second.
secondary weapon is, but I personally feel like equivalent exchange might be better. But for multiplayer and Easter eggs, having a good combination of like Dying Wish and EMT might be amazing. Uh, minor augments, Swift Recovery. Reviving an ally increases both of your movement speeds for a short period of time. Nice, again, playing into that medic style. That's nice. Karmic Return or Karmic Return, whatever. Reviving an ally heals you to full health. That might get you out of some really bad situations. That's, that's interesting. I like that. Slow Death, increase your time in last stand. For all my solo players, this slow death and equivalent exchange might be exactly what, be, what we will be running the entire time, but I could be wrong about that. That's interesting. I really, really like the spread of major augments here in Quick Revive. It's situational. They're all really good, and they're all interesting to like think about and craft while I'm outside the game. Uh, next up, Elemental Pop. Let's see what we got here. Major augments. Citrus Focus. If a weapon has an ammo mod applied, Elemental Pop will only activate that one. So are you saying it has like a much lower reduced timer? Because that might be insane, depending on what the augments are for uh, different uh, for different ammo mods and such. That's going to be very interesting. Imperil Peach. Enemies that hit you have a chance to trigger random ammo mods. I mean, depending, uh, it's going to depend on what the chance of that ammo mod like is, but well, it could be good. It could be good. Hey, there we go. Electric Cherry. Reloading creates an electric damage discharge that damages and stuns nearby normal enemies. The emptier the magazine, the stronger the damage. Very, very good. I wonder if that would actually work on the jet gun. That's going to be interesting. So another thing that this does is this confirms that Electric Cherry is not coming back uh, as a perk because it's already used as a major augment. Kind of sad for the people who wanted uh, Electric Cherry in, but hey, at least it's in here in some form. Actually, I think might be the best out of the major augments, just looking at it on paper. Uh, minor augments, the Nera Beam, I think that's how you say that, slightly increase enemy elemental weakness damage. That could be really good on boss damage. If there's anything like there was in Firebase Z, or if bosses take like a certain elemental damage, I would say that's very good, potentially. Pineapple Blast, equipment can also trigger a random ammo mod. I feel like that's kind of overkill, especially because all tacticals and lethals, if they do damage, are infinite damage as far as I'm aware. Is that different? A uh, chill berry, slightly reduce all ammo mod cold. Yeah, that's that's the meta right there. Yeah, there you go. Chill chill berry, slightly reduce all ammo ammo mod cooldowns. Like, come on now, come on. With with elemental pop, like that that's no debate that. I think that's just obvious. Uh PhD flopper. Oh yeah, it does. Self-inflicted explosive damage. So it does not stop all um CC damage. So falling will still uh deal damage to you. That's it's really interesting. Okay. Uh major augments. Gravity MD. Just falling from heights creates explosions. So just any height. So I could jump like slightly down and it would cause PhD flopper to trigger. Or does it mean like so much so just jumping causes it? Interesting. We're definitely gonna have to look at that. Uh, Dr. Ram, tactical sprints knock down and damage base zombies. Hmm, base zombies. That's gonna be interesting because does that include armored zombies? Because they technically are base. They just have armor on. If that's the case, Dr. Ram could be in insanely good for training. But if it doesn't, uh, uh, kind of mid, but not bad. PhD slider. Yep, there we go. PhD slider. We saw that one in the trailer. Sliding into enemies triggers explosions. So PhD slider is back as PhD flopper as well, which I think is really cool. Uh, minor augments. Environmentalist. Become immune to environmental damage while sliding. So if you have the PhD slider and the environmentalist uh, combined, I guess that means it acts like a better PhD potentially speaking, I'm not too sure. That's that's something that needs to be tested in game to have any sort of like basis on. EOD technicians slightly reduce height and distance requirements for explosives. So I feel like this goes like this pairs perfectly with gravity MD. So we'll we'll see how much that does. This is very much like a test in game type of augments. Try biologist sliding distance and speed are increased. So a lot of these augments kind of help with PhD slider. So if you're not running PhD slider, EOD technician seems like the main one you're going to use unless this means in general. So like just having that on will also increase like your base sliding speed and uh, distance. That could be interesting. We'll see. Uh, next up, the new perk, Melee Macchiato. Major augment, Espresso. All melee attacks are slightly faster. 
that might have to be used a lot because uh, in the gameplay we've seen, uh, it looks really, really slow. So hopefully it's hopefully it's good. Uh, this is the one that we were teased about. Uh, Vampiric Extraction. Melee attacks heal a small amount of health. Uh, I think actually in the in the last blog, they actually had the exact numbers. I could be tripping, so I'm not going to say if that's true or not. Triple shot. Your punch can hit multiple enemies at once. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. This one. This one always. Uh, minor augments. Stick and move. Backpedal speed is increased after a successful melee attack. So basically just helps you stay safe, which I, I think is uh, something that definitely this perk maybe needs. But I think it's cool. Strength training, your punch can one-shot normal enemies for longer. Uh, speaking of that, in the gameplay, I think on round 30, Melee Macchiato was like, it was basically useless. So this might be a mandatory if you want to really use this thing for any prolonged period of time. Lastly, hidden impact. Melee kills reload a portion of your held weapon. That could be really good. Really, really good uh, with certain strategies in mind or just for the early game. But I might be overthinking it. Uh, this one, definitely, I'm going to have to like reread a bit to see if any of them in particular are going to be better or not. Next up, we're going to go over all of the ammo mods and the augments. So if you do not know, uh, augment... So if you do not know, uh, these are acquired from Salvage from the new Armory machine, which is pretty cool. And these are what they look like. We have Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Deadwire, Napalm Burst, and the new Shadow Rift, which is really cool. And I think I'm going to be using that primarily, not just because it's new, but I think it actually looks really good in my opinion. Uh, and these are the ranks in which we unlock, um, I guess, the like progression for them or when we can progress them in augments, I, I guess. So for Brain Rot, it's major augments. First, we have Plague. The charmed enemy has a chance to turn, has a chance to turn other enemies. So I can have infinite army? All right, perfect. I think I'm gonna use that one. Uh, Pheromone. The charmed enemy distracts nearby normal and special enemies for a short period of time. Ooh, a monkey bomb effect. These are looking really good so far. Big game. Brain wrap can charge elite enemies. So you're saying like I can charm like a mangler or like the abomination dudes. Okay, all of these look really, really promising. That's good to see. Good to see. Minor augments. Extension. Brain rot duration is slightly increased. Good. Nothing too major, but hey, that's good. Haste. Brain rot cooldown is slightly reduced. I wouldn't be surprised if this is on like uh, all of them. Some variation of this and the last one is like something that maybe does something different. Which is speaking of which, explosive. Charmed enemies explode at the end of brain rot's duration, dealing toxic damage. Interesting. Uh, that could be good. That could be mediocre. It depends how it works in the higher rounds. Because if this works with this and it like one shots, you could potentially just have an infinite horde of zombies permanently. That sounds awesome. Uh, next up, Cryo Freeze. Major augments. Big game. Cryo, uh, Cryo Freeze can slow elite enemies. So that includes like manglers, the abominations, stuff like that. Uh, ice Cloud. Enemies that are killed while frozen may leave a cloud that slows enemies. And the big thing too is if Elemental Pop triggers these augments, you also, you really want to pay attention if that's the case uh, for certain strategies. Frozen Stiff. Enemies are frozen in place. Okay, interesting. We'll have to see how good that slow is because frozen stiff might be the way if it's like not a good slow. A uh, minor uh, extension and freezer burn, which increases the damage to frozen enemies and increases the slow duration. Very nice. And finally, liquid nitrogen. Significantly increase your chance for cryo freeze to activate. So that kind of works out how it was in Black Ops 4, if I'm not mistaken. That's cool. Deadwire unlocked immediately. First up, Chain Lightning, the stunned enemy can spread the stun to others. Okay, interesting, not bad. A uh, big game, Deadwire can stun elite enemies. So is, is, does it stun now? I thought it killed. Okay, weird. Lightning Strike, a bolt of lightning strikes from above, stunning all normal and special enemies in place. I think I'm gonna take this one just for how cool that sounds. What, what are, what are you talking about? Hello? Uh, minor Augments, high voltage, Deadwire deals slightly more damage. And Haste, Deadwire cooldown is slightly reduced and extension stun and electric field last longer. Uh, Napalm Burst is up next. Uh, major augments, big game. Uh, in, uh, once again, big game. Uh, Napalm Burst can burn elite enemies. Or er, sorry, th <laughs> next up, Thermite, increase burn effect damage. Firebomb, which I believe is the Black Ops 4 alternate ammo type. Burned enemies explode on death, spreading the fire to nearby enemies. Yeah, so exactly like how it was in Black Ops 4, if I'm not mistaken. It actually could have just been an explosion. 
Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Minor augments. Extension. Increase the burn damage duration. Incendiary. Each damage tick has a small chance to spread to nearby enemies. Depending on how many ticks that works and if the ticks can spread, more ticks, that might be really good. And lastly, for minor augments, contact burn. Initial burn effect deals more damage. Interesting. And the one that I think everyone wants to know about, which is Shadow Rift, which is unfortunately unlocked at level 44. Definitely something we're gonna have to like wait, uh, you know, wait to get. Uh, first up, major augments, big game. The Shadow Rift can activate on elite enemies. Very, very good, but also interesting. So Shadow Rift by default does not work on Manglers and the big dudes. Good to know, actually. Next up, Topple Danger. Warp one enemy that deals shadow damage to others. Oh, so it's kind of like a turn friend, except they're like a shadow person? And the one that I think we all saw in the trailer, Explosive Rain. Enemies that are dropped from portals will explode on contact with the ground. Very nice. And one that sounds really good in my opinion. Minor Augments. Uh, shadow Rift cooldown is reduced. Target dropped enemies will fall on other enemies. So this, these kind of go hand in hand. And super massive. The singularity lethal radius is increased and can kill more enemies. Very, very nice. Uh, Shadow Rift actually seems like it's going to be pretty good. I'm definitely going to maybe speed run explosive rain and targeted as my drops, but super massive might actually go even better if it's if it would interact in the way I'm thinking of initially. Uh, next up, we have the five field upgrades and augments. If you need a refresher, those are Aether Shroud, Frenzy Guard, the new one, Dark Flare, Healing Aura, and Energy Mine. And these are unlocked at level zero, Energy Mine, so that is default. Frenzied Guard is at level nine, Dark Flare, 20, Healing Aura, 33, and Aether Shroud, 47, which makes the most sense. It's, let's be honest, it's the best, more than likely. I could be wrong, but we will see. Speaking of which, Aether Shroud is first. All right, let's see what you got, big boy. Major Augments, Group Shroud, nearby players are also cloaked? That's insane. So it's also a utility device for your friends. Oh no, I could easily see this playing to where it's like, you you go on cooldown with one, and then the other guy kills, and then he gets his back, and then he goes and uses his, and then it goes back and forth, back and forth. Okay, hopefully that's not how that's gonna work in game, but I could see that being, an oversight, I could see that being an oversight. Next up, Burst Dash. Warp forward a short distance, killing all normal enemies in your path. I don't think that's how I worked in Cold War. I think they were still alive. The fact they, uh, the fact it also kills is very cool. Interesting. Uh, void Sheath. Swap to your dedicated melee weapon as it in... Next up, Void Sheath. Swap to your dedicated melee weapon as it's imbued with Dark Aether energy. Kills allow you to stay in Aether Shroud for longer. Okay, interesting. Now, if the melee weapon becomes a one-shot permanently, um, it better have diminishing returns because I guarantee you there's eventually going to be a melee weapon that's so fast, like the, uh, 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 was it the Ninja Turtle, like, uh, like swords or whatever in Cold War, where it could probably maintain it forever, like besides in between rounds, I guess. So we'll have to see about that. Minor Augments, Instant Reload Activation, instantly reloads your currently held weapon. Basic, pretty good. Not really necessary because, you know, you're in Aether Shroud, so who cares? Next up, Extra Charge increases, maximum charge by one. I feel like everyone's gonna use that one personally. Extension Aether Shroud duration is significantly increased. Okay, not like a minor increase. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> um, I really feel like everyone's just gonna use Extra Charge and this, Actually, wait, extra charge in this void uh, void sheath might go insanely hard. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to see. Uh next up we have the new dark flare, generate an energy beam that deals lethal shadow damage and pierces everything in its path. Penetrates, but pierce, same thing. Major augments first up. Extension significantly increase dark flare's duration. Awesome. It looks like it really needed the augments, honestly, from the gameplay we saw. So probably a good thing. Uh, supernova, the beam is replaced with a sphere that damages nearby enemies as it travels. The ball detonates at the end of Dark Flare's duration. Hmm. Uh, I want to know how good that is, because if I'm being honest, from what I've seen of Dark Flare, it really hasn't seemed that good. Uh, Dark Pact, beam heals and revives other players on contact. Okay, if it just healed, that would have been bad, but revives, that's interesting. Very, very good. Okay. Minor Augments, Broad Beam significantly increases the size of the beam, pretty basic. Heavy Shadow, the beam slows enemies on contact, 
which looked like something it desperately needed because you were the zombies were catching up to the people I saw using uh, Dark Flare in gameplay. Finally, extra charge increases max charges by one. Next up, Frenzied Guard. Major augment phalanx. Teammates can also repair armor from kills while near. Wait, 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 hold on. Frenzied Guard, repair armor to full and force all enemies in the area to temporarily target you. Armor takes all damage during that time. Interesting. So kind of the team player sort of thing, but also in solo, that actually sounds like it'd be pretty good. Uh, Major Augment, Phalanx teammates can also repair armor from kills while nearby? Retribution, trigger an explosion on activation. Normal enemies that melee the player are damaged and knocked down. Frenzy fire, while frenzy, use ammo from stock. Next up, minor augments, repair boost. Repair more armor per kill. Interesting, if that also applies to teammates, that would be pretty cool. Extension, increase frenzy guard duration. Rally on activation, repair all teammates armor to full. All nearby teammates, That's that could be pretty good actually. Next up, healing aura. I'm not expecting too much out of this one. Um, Its major augments are resilience. All affected players have their health regeneration delayed reduced and their rate of healing increased temporarily. Enduring radiance. The beams in their healing effects persist for a short time after leaving the area of effect. Okay, I mean, depending on how long, like if it lasts for a second, that's not gonna be that good. But if it lasts for like five, 10 seconds, that actually could be pretty good. Persistence, revived players keep all perks on their bleed out bar. So basically, if you wanna be a super medic, uh, run this with EMT. That's what I'm understanding. Uh, <laughs> minor augments, inner strength, affected players, damage is slightly increased for a short time. That sounds pretty good, actually. Protection, healed players have damage slightly mitigated for a short time. If that stacks on top of armor, that would be really good. That actually sounds really good on paper. Uh, stoic presence, on activation, special and elite enemies are stunned Well. Normal enemies are knocked down. You know, running this in a boss fight would be really interesting, especially if there's a lot of zombies like in the arena chasing you. Next up is energy mine, a uh, scatter. The energy mine will split into three mines that scatter and detonate one time each. Turret, instead of a mine, deploy a turret that shoots at the nearest enemy. That turret better be good because Energy mine by itself was really good just by default. Lastly, carousel. Three energy mines will float around you, detonating when an enemy is nearby. Okay, uh, that could be good for training, I think. I, uh, we're definitely gonna have to see how that plays in game, but right now it seems like scatter is like just by default the best. It seems like just at least from reading paper. Frequency boost, increase detonation count and duration of energy mine. Extra charge, increase max charges by one. Saw that coming. And lastly, Siren. Energy mine now attracts nearby enemies for a short time. Uh, next up, we have Loadout. Locate the Loadout option in the Weapons menu. Is here you'll choose and save your zombie loadouts. Compared to multiplayer, the loadouts for zombies are set up a little differently. The zombie loadouts is comprised of the following. Weapon, your primary. Melee weapon, which is a dedicated melee. Your field upgrade, a tactical and lethal on by default. So the tacticals are as follows, which is concussion, which you unlock by default. Smoke is at 17. Stem shots is at 30. Decoy is at 35. Shock charge is at 42. Monkey bombs is at 18. Okay, that's weird. Why is it down here? Whatever. And the Casimir device, aka Mini Gersh's, are at 48. Which, um, wow, spawning in with a Casimir. I, um, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not gonna lie. If it was, like, just limited to this, th that's, like, the first L of this whole shebang so far. I'm not sure how I like that, if I'm gonna be honest. And for the lethals, we have Frag Grenade unlocked by default. We have Sticky Nade at level 9, C4 at level 14, Thermite Grenade at level 21, Impact Nades at 26, Volatiles are unlocked at 32. I'm especially looking forward to that one. Uh, Blast Trap at 41. That's interesting. So it kind of looks like a mortar, but you place it down like a trap. And finally, the Combat Axe at level 53. I wonder why it's so high. All right, and here we go, guys. This is probably what a lot of people have been wanting to know. So, off rip. It looks like there are no classic gobble gums. That's weird and different and honestly kind of odd, but whatever, let's see what we got. So for rares, we have stock option, Killjoy, anywhere but here. Cashback is a rare? Okay, whatever. Uh, temporal Gift, Arsenal Accelerator, and Shields Up. Uh, for epics, we have Who's Keeping Score, Free Fire, nowhere but here, Soda Fountain, Profit Sharing, Respin Cycle, and Exit Strategy. Legendaries are Idolize, Wall Power, Phoenix Up, 
Crate Power on the house, wall-to-wall -wall clearance, and immolation liquidation. And finally, our Ultras, which are Perkaholic, near-death experience, a new Gobble Gum, which is Hidden Power. I don't think we've seen this anywhere as far as I'm uh, concerned or aware of. Uh, Wonder Bar, which is the also new Ultra Gobble Gum coming to us uh, for Season 1. And finally, Raindrops is making a return on launch. That's <laughs> that's crazy. And of course, we have the two Whimsical Gobble Gums, which is, uh, what is it, Newtonian Negation and Indedection. Great, they fart everywhere. Awesome. Next up, we have a list of Gobble Gums that I, from what I'm understanding and reading here, is these Gobble Gums are only available once you get to the level in which they're unlocked, which is interesting that not all the ultras are on here, in my opinion. I feel like that would have made more sense, but let's go through it anyway. At level five, we unlock Killjoy. At level eight, we unlock Stock Option. At level 11, we unlock Who's Keeping Score. At level 15, we unlock Cashback. At level 21, we, un we unlock Anywhere But Here. At level 23, we unlock Exit Strategy. At level 26, we unlock Soda Fountain. At level 29, we unlock Profit Sharing. At level 32, we unlock Wall-to-Wall -wall Clearance. At level 36, we unlock Free Fire. At level 38, we unlock On the House. At level 42, we unlock Nowhere But Here. At level 45, we unlock Idolize. At level 51, we unlock Wonder Bar. And at level 54, we unlock Hidden Power. All right, all right, all right. So uh, we, I, I believe most of us already know what the Gobble Gums do. You can always read if you don't. I will go over the brand new Gobble Gums in this uh, video right here. So uh, Shields Up. Last three minutes, armor is twice as strong. Out of the Epic Gobble Gums, we have one new one, but we also have a reworked version of Respin Cycle. So first up, the reworked version of Respin Cycle. Respins the weapon in the mystery box after it has settled to one of equal or higher rarity. So you can never actually get screwed over by this Gobble Gum and say you were getting a, a green and then get a white. No, you'll always get a green or higher, which I think is awesome. And exit strategy, it looks like it's exactly what we thought it was. Activate Expel vote immediately. Reduce zombie spawns during Expel. So this is for the people who maybe don't have a lot of time to play zombies in multiplayer and they want to play with their friends. And they just want to say, hey, I'll put this on. So when we're all ready to leave or we got to leave early, we just pop this and we get going. I think that's actually a really great option. I, I think that's awesome, personally. A, a nice in-game way of saying, hey, we want to end the game early, but we don't want to lose our extra rewards. Uh, out of all the legendary Gobble Gums, there are none that are new. However, wall-to-wall -wall clearance, I believe, was an elixir in Black Ops 4. So for those of you who maybe don't know what that is, it lasts 30 seconds and wall buys cost only 10 points. And last but not least, we have the Ultras and the Whimsical Gobble Gums with the two new ones, which are Wonder Bar and Hidden Power. I don't think we really need to talk about the Whimsical Gobble Gums, but I guess we'll also talk about Indigestion for those who do not know. So Wonder Bar activates on the next Mystery Box spin. The next weapon from the Mystery Box will be a Wonder Weapon, just a Wonder Weapon. So it could be the Ray Gun or the Beam Smasher if you're on Terminus. And on Liberty Falls, it could be the Jet Gun or the Ray Gun once more. So that's, that's a good way of keeping it somewhat balanced. Uh, next up, Next up, Hidden Power. Upgrade your currently held weapon to Legendary Rarity. That's, um, wow. That's, uh, that's really powerful. That's a little too good. I was expecting an Ultra Rare to be, like, increased by, like, two levels or maybe three. So if you had a green, you could go straight to Legendary. But, um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, so I just found the speedrunning Gobblegum. Get the best weapon in the game off spawn and then just pop this. That... I don't know how I feel about that. That's a little too good. And for the Whimsical Gobble Gum that, we, uh, that is new, uh, last three minutes, Zombies Killed experience stream flatulence for the uh, very gentlemanliest of uh, us readers. This right here I think is actually pretty cool. Weapon Select Wonder Weapons. Weapons Menu. Along with Gunsmith, Loadouts, and Augments, any Wonder Weapon you may have previously unlocked along with any associated skins, which I believe was confirmed by Kevin Drew. Uh, if you complete the non-guided Easter egg before the guided mode comes out, you actually get an exclusive skin for the Wonder Weapon, which I think is awesome, great. Uh, continuing on, our displayed here. This menu is simply for you to choose the preferred skin for your Wonder Weapon before obtaining it during the match. That is 
awesome. We can actually put skins on wonder weapons. That's freaking sick. And here we go with the, uh, I guess we call it the middle ground option. We have the dedicated crew in the operator selection screen. So as you can see right here, the dedicated crew operators are highlighted in this uh, kind of zombie red thing going on. And the rest of the non-zombies characters are just in normal uh, gray outline boxes. And that is about all that we have for this blog post, guys. Overall, this was a massive, massive W. So anyway, after all this, I'm going to let you all in the comments continue with the conversation. What did you like about the blog post? What did you hate about the blog post? Is there anything in particular you would maybe like to see any questions? Again, sorry for not uploading in so long. Just, you know, work and everything's gotten in the way and also my own brain because I can't think of anything creative, unfortunately. But videos should be coming out hopefully soon when Black Ops 6 starts. It's just going to be a constant barrage of videos from me and my friends on YouTube. So anyways, guys, see you later.